This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. All right, everyone, welcome to Long Table 197, uh, getting up to a big milestone. Today we have Dr. Lucia Carbone, the Andrew M. Burnett Associate Curator of Roman Numismatics. Uh, Lucia has been with the ANS since 2016, first as an assistant curator before a, an important promotion to associate curator in 2020. Uh, she's also a, an adjunct professor at Columbia University, so if you ever want any uh, hardcore classes to take, uh, sign up for hers. Uh, she has published numer numerous articles, too many to name, and she has two books. Uh, one, The Hidden Power, Late Sister for Production and Organization of Pro Provincia Asia, uh, which was published in 2020, and the two-volume Local Coinages in a Roman World, uh, 2nd Century BC to the 1st Century AD, uh, which is a catalog of the Richard B. Wachonki collection of coins in the early R Roman provinces, which is uh, just recently published in December of 2023. Today, Lucia will be giving a talk titled Funding Sulla's Wars, Monetary Production in the Mediterranean Basin uh, from 88 to 82 BCE, which is a distillation of a, a future article that she's about to publish. So uh, without further ado, Lucia, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, uh, of course, my uh, last book, uh, of course, has several different uh, co-authors. Uh, I coordinated these and authored several of these, but for example, we have Clive Stannard here with us, uh, who authored the part uh, relative to the non-state coinages of Italy, for example, so it was a, a joint effort. So, anyway, and since exactly we have a lot to di discuss today, I will uh, uh, begin at this point uh, sharing uh, uh, my screen. Okay, there you go. And from the first slide, uh, I don't know why it doesn't, okay, here, sorry. Okay, here we go. Um, so as you can see here, you have, uh, um, we'll, we'll talk about exactly an integrated analysis of monetary production, because uh, I will show you, and this is the idea of how production in the East uh, and production in Rome and the production of the Roman Mint were somewhat uh, uh, coordinated. As, of course, uh, this is not uh, this is not really my idea. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, François de Galatei has been talking about for a long time, this sort of Greek uh, coinages for the Romans. So these coinages that look Greek, uh, but, uh, uh, but actually were produced for the Romans. But what we'll do today is uh, really putting to work uh, these, these two new databases uh, uh, we have for Greek die databases, for Greek coinages on one side, the silver, and for Roman Republican coinage on the other side, which is exactly uh, RRDP. So without further ado, I'll begin. So. Um, we know that uh, Sulla, so we will use uh, the expedition of Sulla, so the first Mithridatic War and Sulla campaign in the East as a case study for this integration of production in the East and production in Italy. And let's begin with this. Um, in 88 BCE, Sulla was uh, uh, entrusted with the command of the Roman uh, uh, legions, let's say, in the, uh, against the Mithridates, uh, found himself barred from Rome uh, by, the, uh, by the supporters uh, of his enemy, Marius. So, and because of that, uh, as you can see here, uh, Marius and his partisan in the city went to slaying uh, the friends of Sulla and plundering their property. Of course, uh, Sulla, uh, Sulla exactly had succeeded in making his escape. But 
I will not now, in this moment, I will not go into detail, details of, of course, the war and the rivalry between Sulla and Marius. But the huge problem at this point is that uh, Sulla, the huge problem to Sulla, is that Sulla has the command of the war against Mithridates as an army, but he is barred from Rome. So basically, he cannot go back to Rome. He has to find a way to pay his army because, of course, the alternative for him would be, of course, disband the, the army, but then it would have been immediately killed by uh, Marius and his followers. Now, um, he, Sulla is said, as far as we know, to have had an army of uh, five legions. Uh, and let's say this has been a much, it's a much vexata question, much the um, armies were paid. Let's say that we know that uh, in the early imperial age, uh, each soldier was paid 225 denarii per year, but we can assume uh, actually that uh, uh, in Sulla's time, uh, the salary could be calculated at uh, exactly half of it, 112.5 denarii. Uh, per year. So I'm very, very happy to go over these. Again, uh, I have all uh, the bibliography on these and to further discuss this later on if you want. But what is important here is that, at least for now, is that Sulla, in order to pay for this army, even if we know that the soldiers were not, of course, paid immediately and so and so, needs plus or minus. Uh, 13 million denarii per year, okay? Now, a part of this money had already been allotted to, uh, to Sulla because the previous year, um, the Senate had decided that uh, a motion was passed to sell what King Numa Pompilius had bequeathed to Rome to pay for sacrifices to the gods. But, and these were 9,000 pounds of uh, gold, which is a lot, but this can be calculated to be the equivalent of 8 million denarii. So anyway, Sulla didn't have enough. And so, but he has no alternative but to leave Italy with this, uh, um, with all this, with this army, and of course, he will have to find some way to provide for this army in terms, of course, of supplies, but also in terms of pay in uh, the East. OK, so as I said, this is the talk. So in the first part, I'll just briefly present you these databases. Some of you know we already gave some long tables about them, so I will not talk so much about it. The second part, I will describe this Greek coinages funding the Sulla's campaigns in Greece and in the East. In the third part, I will address very briefly, based on our RDP and on the work of, uh, on, on the, um, on of course, the archives of Schaefer, Schaefer archives, and also on the work of our uh, postdoc research uh, associate uh, uh, Dr. Alice Sharpless, so the production of the Mint of Rome in 8382. And the fourth part will be uh, devoted to the Greek and Roman coinages funding Sulla Reconquest of Italy. So it's, it's a lot as usual, but you'll see we have very interesting. Okay, so die studies databases. Uh, you have, some of you perhaps have already seen these slides. This is uh, how uh, the house, actually, uh, and the archive in the house of uh, uh, Richard Schaefer, who generously donated, allowed uh, the ANS to scan uh, his archive, appears. Okay, so uh, Richard Schaefer, in uh, 35 years of work, has uh, um, has addressed and has begun die studies of all the uh, Roman Republican 
uh, issues, Roman Republican issues, with some exceptions like Ebrusius and so and so. So we have, uh, this is a page from his binders, as you see, and this is what we have uh, now at ANS. And as I said, this is uh, still a work uh, in, uh, um, in theory, in progress. So uh, these archives, all these binders, all these materials, uh, have been published first as images on Archer, which is our archival database. And then they now are, at least some issues that have been already analyzed, on CRRO. So they add to the number of specimens in our CRRO. And they also appear um, as specimens in SITNAM. So, which is the specimen database, uh, which is, as you see, is the specular of Mantis, is the coins we actually do not have at the ANS, but each of them has specifics. So, for example, the auction uh, catalog they came from, the museum there they came from, and then on our RDP, we have the, uh, the actual dice. Okay, so this is, uh, this is how it's now all linked on um, on uh, um, on the, our ANS website um, and this other one uh, this is the other element on which I will base uh, all uh, I will build uh, my calculation is uh, this database for Greek coinages uh, that um, uh, is uh, um, is now hosted by the, um, the library in Brussels, the Royal Library uh, in uh, Brussels. And uh, as you can see now, uh, it really uh, includes, uh, I think, uh, 2,500 different dye studies uh, from Greek coinages all over uh, the Mediterranean and well past the Mediterranean. So these are my two sources for my calculations. Okay, so I can then now go back to what we were saying. So, as I said, uh, Sulla had an underfunded army, so she, he had necessarily really to find uh, money, and uh, so immediately began to collect money, allies, and supplies from Etolia and Thessaly. So we know that that's what Sulla was actually, sorry, was actually doing. So this is a Sulla campaign in Greece. So you see how he got here to um, Illyria. You see Epirus, uh, he, he comes down here. But so, we will discuss each of these, uh, um, each of the movements of Silla, because uh, as it has been already uh, well, uh, well put by François de Calatei, uh, the, his army left a trace, let's say, of uh, coins probably issued exactly to fund this army. What is new now is that thanks to all these databases, we can actually count and discuss all of these. So you see, this is actually a map made by Francois, and uh, uh, this uh, article by Francois will be now published in the 2024 RBN, the Review Belge de Numismatique. So anyway. Thank you very much, Lucia, I'm here. Oh, <laughs> hi, actually, exactly, no, thank you. Thank you exactly. so much. I, I, I'm so. so no, 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 because I have to declare my sources uh, and you will see and I hope uh, I made uh, good use uh, of silver. I think that the numbers are very, very, very convincing. And I know that you have already addressed this in 2016, but now we have uh, much better data also thanks to you. So it's pretty fun. So anyway, I will not now go into all the definitions of why this is uh, actually, I will, uh, you will see that uh, uh, Francois here in this map, uh, 
as some of these conages that are in light blue and some of them that are actually in uh, white. These one in light blue are what we call now, together with Peter Toneman, surrogate conages, so conages that continued <clears throat> pre-existing conages, pre-Roman conages, even if we think that their production was somewhat connected to the presence of the Romans. And then you have uh, these uh, uh, white ones, which are, let's say, new. So conages created right uh, ex novo by the Romans. So we will begin with all of these. So, okay. So let's begin with this. So, Duracium. So we know that the Romans arrived there. Uh, Albana Meta in 2015 worked on this very and uh, created really this fantastic die study of uh, uh, the uh, coins, the, the drums of and emi drums of Duracium. But what I will focus here is uh, this phase five. Sorry for all. Uh, uh, these numbers. I promise I have a summarized table here because it's the one here that can be between phase four and phase five can be for sure related somewhat to Sulla. So I'll just show you now before I begin talking about numbers, uh, these, uh, uh, one of these coins. I will stop sharing for a second my PowerPoint here so that uh, I can show you. I hope uh, you all see this uh, uh, beautiful coin with this is a drum of uh, actually face fort of uh, um, of Duracium, which is characterized as you see. Uh, you can have a different, of course, this is uh, a different control marks. In this case, of course, you see the head of Helius uh, in the one I showed on the uh, you you in the one I showed uh, on uh, on the um, on the slide. There was a different control mark, but here this is the civic badge, as you can see, with the cow and the calf, and on the other side, you can see this uh, double. Uh, um, double uh, sun pattern. And while we are here at it, uh, I will also mention another coinage that is connected to this. So while I'm at it, uh, I want to show you this other coinage, which is the coinage of uh, Apollonia, uh, that is once again connected, that has been studied by Picard and Jean Jekai in uh, the year 2000. And uh, um, as, as you can see, you can see that the exactly the same types. So uh, Picard and Jean Jekai arrived at the, um, at the conclusion that Apollonia probably uh, produced coinage uh, in, in a in, in an amount that was like uh, one quarter of the one uh, produced by uh, produced by um, Duracum. So I'll share again. Sorry for this. And then let's see. This is Apollonia, as you see. So let's see that uh, these are these numbers. And once again, I'm very willing then to discuss them later on but let's say that for the phase five which i know that the phase five uh, is dated to the 80s uh, or probably anyway the phase five we have uh, for duracium um, the production of uh, between let's say 10 million and almost 5 million denarii equivalent. It is to say that the drugs on Duracium, actually, especially in these last phases, phase four and phase five, are really very similar to the denarii. And also same for Apollonia, as we say that it's one quarter. So the idea really now with these new numbers is that uh, 
uh, Duracum and Avolonia together, as I said, were producing uh, um, almost, let's say, around, around 900,000 denarii equivalent uh, per year. So if we know that each legion was needed 1,500,000 denarii, let's say, you can estimate plus or minus that people, that, um, that the army of Sulla could have supported itself, let's say, in here for a month, perhaps not so long, but still you see how the passage of the army could have, of course, um, put and created uh, and created the necessity for these uh, issues. So let's, let's go on what other ones which are much clearer connected. So uh, in the life of Sulla, Plutarch, tells us about uh, the um, the about the uh, relation the, the encounter between Lucullus which was a lieutenant of Sulla and Sura okay for here he said he was confronted he's talking about Tessal he was confronted by Brutus Sura who was the lieutenant of Santius the praetor of Macedonia and a man of uh, superior courage and prudence but when Lucius Lucullus ordered him to give place to Sulla was coming and to leave the conduct of the war to him as the Senate had voted, he at once abandoned Boeotia and marched back to Santius. Now, this uh, Sura that so is somebody who somewhat exactly recognized the authority of Sulla and Lucullus there, is also, interestingly enough, as we know, um, present uh, on uh, very important coinage. And why it's important his name? Because, of course, his name, Sura, allows us to date really to the year, for example, these issues here of these coinages, which is otherwise called Isilla's coinage, which we know we don't know, for example, where, I mean, we know now when it was issued, but for example, we have no idea where this, uh, who this Azulas, Azulas was, for example. Uh, we know now that he was supposedly, no, it was issued in Macedonia, but I will show you some overstrike with Tassos tetradrums. So for sure, this is a coinage another, in this case, a new coinage that was issued for the Romans. Once again, I know that I'm skipping a lot of passages here in the attempt of showing you all this interesting material, and I'm very, very much uh, willing to talk and discuss more about this. This is a uh, uh, moment. Uh, um, a quick one. Uh, yes. Can you see it well? And yes, I think so. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, a rare issue within uh, the so-called Isula, co Isula coinage. Um, Francois, among other, together also with uh, Bob Oslo, has showed that this coinage was uh, uh, issued. Uh, probably between 90 and 75. But let's say the ones, the issue with Sura, probably tell, are really dated to these years we are talking about. You see on this side, it's written Macedonon, and you have the head of the deified Alexander. Moment, I will just press. And on this other side, uh, this is really beautiful. Uh, you see how beautifully really struck the reverse is to the difference. You see Sura Legatus Proquestor, which is exactly the titles uh, that are also referred to by um, 
uh, by um, Plutarch. But what is super interesting that tells you once again that these coinages uh, perhaps uh, could even were really issued for a power that was moving from one to the other. I want to show you one thing which is super interesting. This is pretty uncontroversial. This is a tetradrum from Tassos, so in Trace, so a completely different area in theory. Okay. Uh, and you can see even on the reverse of Tassos, can you see Quintus here? Sura. You see Tasian here, of course, of the Tassos, of the Tassians. Here is written um, Heracle, uh, Heracleus Soteros, so of the Heracles de Soter. So, and, but here you can see that you can read Quintus Sura. So Sura, that was in theory in Macedonia, apparently was also responsible for this coinage for the Tassians, which tells us that perhaps this was not really the, we know actually that this, this is called actually pseudo Tassians because we know that this has been recognized already by Ilya Prokopov, which is the one that uh, published this uh, as very different from the original Tassian tetradrums. But what is fun here, and I want to show you. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay, not anybody. I want to show you something that is even more fun, according to me. You see here this uh, Esilla's tetradrum, but what is super fun is that uh, I actually need to give this to François for his uh, uh, Overstrike databases. You see here, can you read Eus? Eurocleus. So this is uh, an Esilla tetradrum struck over a Tassus tetradrum. And uh, this other coin that I'm showing you, this is even more fun. I just want to show that the real one. Yes. Look at this. Can you see here? This is a uh, Tassos. Tazion, can you please see here the club? That is, of course, the club, and there are still reminder here. Okay, what is left of the wreath of the Esilas tetradrum? And here, if you look, you can still see non Macedonon. So you can see that these two coinages, even in theory, they were struck uh, in theory in different, uh, in different um, areas, uh, Thrace and Macedonia, but we know for a fact that they circulated together. We have, of course, papers on that, but also we also have overstrike about them. So, and this uh, tells us, of course, that the Romans were there. We have these issues in the name of Sura. And we know that Sura was connected, of course, to uh, Sulla. Uh, this, of course, uh, uh, we also know that uh, all this area, for example, we have this another article. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit embarrassing that actually Francis here. So, so you see, for example, that also uh, Maronea, and we have other overstrikes that Maronea, another one in Trace, was also overstriking on Mitridates uh, uh, coins. And unfortunately, this one we don't have here, Berlin has. Also, we have an example of Maronea, of um, of Maronea struck over Aesilas. So this gives you the idea 
of the fact that you have all these coinages that are, I mean, the one of Isilas has been created anew, even if uh, uh, there are some iconographical elements that are related to uh, what came before that. Then you have uh, other surrogate coinages, continuing them, uh, continuing previous issues, but all of them are circulating well beyond uh, in a much more complex and integrated way that they used to do in the original uh, counterparts, and we think because of the Romans. Now, now I, of course, uh, have... Uh, um, I tried to isolate, let's say, some of these coinages that I think of these coinages that we have I've specifically explained now, and I tried to isolate some of these issues. Once again, I can tell you what are the criteria. But, and uh, I can, of course, you will have the video, I can send to any of you um, my forthcoming paper or the presentation, but let's say that I calculated that these, uh, that for example, Tasus, Tasus, of course, pseudo Tasus, the Stetterdam I showed you, uh, Exilas, some specific groups that I, uh, that were dated not by me, of course, but to those years, and some of the issues of Maronea, all together, were producing, let's say, an amount comprised by, let's say, as you can see, around 3 million denarii equivalent per year. So is enormous, is of course an enormous amount, but still you can see that this is not enough clearly for all the army of Sulla, but you see how each of these mint has been activated. Okay, this is okay. Then this is of course, once again, this has been newly dated by again Francois and these actually I will show you this other one but what I'm trying to say is that I am trying to put all of this together and I hope I will be able to do it because I can see that uh, to show you how this compares to the production then of the Roman mint and the production of Sulla so this is what I'm getting to so I'm providing you all this data to see how these actually work. And so I'll stop sharing this and I'll show you this uh, diagram of Leucas. Now, this diagram of uh, Leucas in Acarnania has been dated by Francois in 2015 to the year of Sulla's campaign, I'm actually absolutely convinced. You have, uh, you see on the reverse here, uh, you have uh, the prow, and it's very difficult not to see an allusion in this, of course, to the Roman bronze denominations, but also to the power of the Romans. And on this other side, you have uh, this uh, Aphrodite with the arrows, uh, Aphrodite here, which can be identified as Aphrodite Aeneas, which there was, of course, a sanctuary there uh, on uh, Leucas. And just going back a moment to sharing my PowerPoint. Here you go, share. Okay. You have uh, here these uh, data, of course, deriving from Calatei, and you see that here you have uh, the number of coins, denarius equivalent, you have uh, plus or minus uh, what is needed for one legion for one year, or if you have uh, an army of five legions, plus or minus, of course, you're thinking about two months, three months, two and a half months. This is another one, Ainanes in Thessaly, another one that once again has been interpreted by Francois by, as, um, as another coinage, 
uh, issued for the Romans. Now, we know before I showed you the coin, we know that the, the community of Ainanes was honoring Lucullus. So there was for sure a tight relationship, as you can see from this honorary inscription in his uh, name. And uh, here, very interestingly, you see, a moment, stop sharing. Here, another coin. Uh, here, you see this other diagram of Ainanes. One thing that is very interesting here is the presence. Uh, oh, yes, it's the presence. Uh, of uh, the head of uh, Athena, of, of Athena. That is very similar, for example, to what you will see, of course, in a better way, on the, on the new style tetradrums. This is bad, a bad example, and I will show you why. Perhaps this one is much better. There you go. So you see, it's evident, uh, it's evident that you have, uh, that uh, this one issued by the Intesse, by the Enanes, is uh, as, as a model, this one. Now, and I want also to show you how irregularly made, uh, irregularly made this one is, and also the same, actually, goes, uh, from the one I've, I've just showed you for uh, the Le, Le, for Le, Leucas. Look at this. I mean, uh, without going uh, any farther, but let's say that these coins, uh, these coins, specifically these issues, uh, I mean, if you see other issues of Leucas, you will see how well made, well centered they are, while you see this one of Ananas and uh, same thing here, they're really uh, clearly made in a haste. And anyway, and I will share again the PowerPoint here, you have the same. But I will just go fast here, because you see very similar in, uh, um, very similar in size uh, to the one of Leucas. Uh, you have the Cretan imitation of Athenian tetradam. So you have really this concerted effort to fund this. What I'm going to show you is that we are lucky enough at ANS to have actually some of these that are very, very, uh, we know that Lucullus went to Crete. Look at these uh, beautiful ones uh, again here. Um, one moment, this I need to, this comes from, uh, um, Yeraptina, you see again that this is an imitation of an Athenian tetradram, and here you can see the, the reverse. Just to give you an idea, this is the, let's say, the usual reverse of an an Athenian new style tetradrum, and this is the Cretan imitation of it. And then this is, for example, from Gortina. Moment, I just okay. There you go. You see, as I said, there are very few of them, but we are fortunate enough to have them. And I'll just share again my screen. There you go. Oh, OK. So these are the dies we know. You see, there are only four dies, two dies for this. So we are, as I said, these are very, very rare coins. So the reality is that without uh, uh, going farther, let's say that the new numbers provide the possibility to tell that the overall quantity of coinage that, uh, of issues that we have uh, seen until now was, could be estimated to be the rough equivalent uh, of circa 
5 million denarii, enough to support the army of Sulla, probably composed by 20,000, 25,000 soldiers for about seven months. This was an idea that, uh, I mean, Francois already made. Now we have, uh, exactly, thanks to this database, better numbers, I think, also, to his database. So, and uh, at this point, uh, uh, I will just say that, uh, of course, Sulla needed to um, have coinage for the siege of, uh, to be sieging Athens, uh, where uh, the, the lieutenant of Mithridates was. And we know that, uh, uh, again, Plutarch tells us about, uh, Plutarch tells us about uh, the presence of these so-called Luculans as coinage in uh, um, in the Peloponnese. So uh, nowadays, uh, let's say, I think uh, Pierre Assenmacher in 2017 published an article where he summarized several, uh, several arguments, uh, but demonstrated, I think, at this point, without any doubt, that, uh, um, without any doubt, that uh, uh, the coinage, this Luculean coinage that we're talking about, uh, are actually, these Luculean Athenian tetrams, are actually these ones that I will show you in a second. Hi, here. There you go. No, stop sharing. There you go. So, you have this. Also, these have been recognized back in time uh, uh, by Margaret Thompson, who uh, wrote the definitive, not definitive, but the great work, the, the, the reference uh, work on the new style Athenian tetradrums as pseudo-Athenians. So she already recognized the fact that uh, these ones, uh, um, these, these tetradrums were not uh, uh, probably at a style that differed from the one, the, topic, the typical one of Athens, and possibly then were issued outside of Athens. And here we have this very interesting uh, um, uh, monograms that can be solved as Marcus Luculus. Of course, the lieutenant of Silla is Lucius Luculus. Marcus Luculus must have been his brother. Probably that's that's the idea, but what is important, and I know as usual I'm late as always, always. I just uh, want to show you uh, the numbers now that tell you that these uh, issues have been issued in enormous, enormous uh, quantities. So you have this is the biggest. Uh, issues, let's say, issue of Athenian new style tetradrums. And we feel, what is generally taught at this point is that, um, at least this is what I think and what has been, of course, taught by several other people before me, uh, is that uh, Sulla Lugullus basically must have used for, in order to issue this coinage, for example, the silver that has been plundering in the Peloponnese, and we know that that was the case. So now I will, of course, I will skip uh, ahead, uh, okay, this, but uh, I just wanted uh, to just give you now some numbers because I did all of this, and now I want us to compare what Sulla had and what is Rome at this point producing, okay? Because Sulla goes on, of course, in the end to the siege of, to besieging Athens. Athens, of course, in the end fell. Probably there is this huge plundering of Athens. And at this point, Sulla had them to go back to Italy. Now, but either, as we said, Sulla had in theory, no money. Of course, now he has the money coming from the East. But thanks to the RRDP, so you see this was the, um, this was the size of Sulan army, 
thanks to our RDP, for example, we can, and to previous actually studies like the one for Kervusions made by Battery in 1976, uh, we have actually, <clears throat> and thanks to the new uh, analysis uh, made by Alice, Dr. Alice Sharpless, we can now have a very good idea of the production estimate, for example, of the mint of Rome in 83. 82 BCE, so when Sulla, after the victory on Mithridates, the victory of Orcomenus, uh, the victory of, of, uh, of Orcomenus, is, and Cheronea, is actually going back with this army through Italy. And you see this is enormous, uh, just please, uh, we, I have updated now this number here, but just to give you the idea of how this amount of production compares okay, to previous years. Okay, the only one, but this is not well covered, let's say, by our RDP, that's why we have this wide gap in our estimations, but you can see how this enormous production compares to previous years. So the mint of Rome is, of course, in full swing. Sulla's army has been funded with all these Eastern coinages, that's the idea. But now Sulla, after uh, defeating uh, uh, Mithridates, is coming back. The, the mint of Rome is in full swing. And now, of course, Sulla also needs to further fund his army. We know that people were defeating to go towards Sulla's army, so we know clearly that Sulla was very solvent, let's say. And we know that he was very solvent because also he had all the spoils from the East. But I just want to go and discuss uh, in this little time uh, we have okay, not only, of course, some uh, interesting uh, coinages uh, that we have. Allora, we know that Sulla, and this has been interpreted as a so-called uh, as a coinage, as a Roman Republican issue, clearly, this one. But uh, this one, because of the diaxis that is always uh, 12, which is something that is typical of uh, Greek coinages, actually. Uh, let's see if you can see it better. So the idea is that this was anyway created by Greek manpower. You see here, here you see Venus and Cupid. And on this other side, very interesting, to, together with the Litum and so, you see these two trophies, the trophies of Sulla, the like trophies that now we know that actually existed because Sofia Zumbaki has published several papers, so they found the actual uh, trophies uh, in uh, Keronea. But you can also see, and this is fantastic, uh, that these two trophies uh, are also visible in this other issue uh, made in Athens. You saw this is an issue of the Athenian tetrams exactly with the same trophies. So clearly a way to celebrate Sulla's victory. Anyway, so Sulla had to fund, let's say, his return to Italy. He found that uh, uh, with the spoils, we know, uh, from, uh, uh, from the East, and we have uh, all these different uh, uh, 
issues, uh, Siulan issues after Keronea, that one that we have already seen uh, that has clear similarities to the Zatinian tetradrum, this one, uh, 367, uh, where Siulla is presented probably as triumphator here with the Caduceus presenting, representing the peace and the victory crowning him. And here we have this other issue uh, that has been identified by Alberto Campana as uh, an issue that should be connected to Siulla. So now, and again, this is uh, uh, work of uh, Alice Sharpless, who has, for example, uh, identified this uh, uh, issue with, uh, uh, with control marks. These are the most recent estimated production of Siulla. But what is interesting for me, for you to see here, and in this then I open, I still have another part, but I will open the field at this point to discussion because of course, I guess there are a lot of questions on where well, I've got all these numbers or whatever. I just would like you to see the fact that uh, Siulla, okay, so you have this Collegium Monetale of 8382 BCE that is producing an enormous amount of coinage, almost unprecedented, almost. I mean, we have the 90 BCE, 86, but it's enormous. Siulla is actually issuing outside of Italy because all these uh, coinages that I've been saying, these so-called Siullan issues, have, uh, um, have an die axe, and I can show you with one of these, again, another one, that, for example, is again at 12, so like the Greek coins. So for sure, they were, we can imagine they were produced not in Greece, or something like in southern Italy, for sure, and we know why not in the mint of Rome. But Siulla, even if uh, is, was outside of Rome, you can see the enormous amount of his production. As I say, it cannot rival okay, the one of Rome. But look at this, and let's imagine, and so that's why, I mean, that is a part I can forego for the moment, but I can send the PowerPoint, the complete PowerPoint, to whoever wants that. Of course, Siulla is also at this point uh, coming back uh, with the talents of silver from the province of Asia, with all the spoils from Athens. So on top of this coined silver, he has an enormous amount of uncoined bullion. And so, I just want, and this is uh, the same army, the army that is coming triumphing back, I mean, the victorious army of Silla was the same one that was, which left Italy underfunded and had to use basically and force, I guess, uh, all these other men uh, to, in the East, to produce silver for its uh, uh, upkeep. Okay, so uh, I hope this was uh, somewhat uh, interesting uh, uh, for you, I guess, through lots of questions. Uh, I mean, I also have lots of passages, unfortunately, I had to skip, uh, but if you have any questions, I am, oh yes. Okay, I can see one moment. Uh, oh, I cannot see it anymore. Let's see. Chat. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Do we think that the nominal cost of a legion was actually entirely produced in coins? No. No, uh, no I don't. Uh, I don't necessarily... Uh, Think so. I mean, first of all, they didn't. Of course, they were not paid uh, immediately, 
uh, but we have to think that uh, um, anyway, independently of the pay of the soldiers, there are all these costs for the upkeep of the uh, soldiers, for the provisions, and also I have not uh, even um, counted the auxilia that were with them. So uh, while uh, we don't think that all of this was paid in coins, as I was thinking, for example, as I was saying, for example, for uh, the army of Silla who comes back, he has uh, all this production of coinage, but at the same time, we know that uh, not all the costs were uh, were paid with coins. At the same time, for example, sorry, I forgot that the coin, the reason why I cho I've chosen a specific tetradrum that I will show you a moment. Can I, uh, can you, exactly. You see, this tetradrum that I was showing you, this uh, uh, Athenian new style tetradrum, actually that we have at the ANS, comes from uh, yeah, this perfect. Thank you. This uh, Abruzzi hoard that clearly was found in Italy, and this shows you that a soldier. And this was found together with. This is pretty cool, and that's why I, I chose specifically. Sorry, this coinage, this this coin, and uh, for example, this Abruzzi hoard is composed as most of them. The other coins. Uh, as this other one, okay, this uh, uh, RRC 359, this one uh, issued by Sulla with the victories, but clearly the fact that uh, this soldier, because this must have been a soldier, this was on the way, this was found on the way of Sulla's uh, Shulana, uh, Shulana, um, army, that was bringing with him, okay, also the Athenian tetradrum. So this tells you that uh, the soldiers, of course, had received, okay, this is a hint to the fact that the soldiers must have received part of their pay also in, for example, Athenian tetradrum. Otherwise, there's no point for Athenian tetradrums to be mixed with the Roman denarii and then found in um, in Southern, in in Abruzzi. Um, okay, I see these other. Okay, so uh, are there any other questions? I see that one was uh, answered by uh, Don Square. Thank you, thank you. Uh, any other questions? No more questions? Great. Okay. So uh, then I'm sorry that I I haven't uh, sure any any other coin you would wish to see, for example, uh, like or, or see again. For example, the one with the overstrikes uh, or okay. No. If you don't have uh, any other uh, questions, oh yeah. Uh, Clive, uh, I, I think that makes sense, but can you please uh, tell, tell us, I mean, I know that this is theory, but uh, what are the elements in which you think that uh, the massive bronze panther issue was made for uh, Sulla troops, uh, Clive? I mean, I don't know if you have, if you have a answer short enough, uh, but uh, for me it would be super interesting. Well, uh, Lucia, the the overstrikes dated into the eighties, end of the eighties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the reason I think it's a cylinder comes from the big lead pieces made by the Italo-Betican people in, um, I think, in Cordoba, and they have one big piece that has cylinders, um, has the reverse of the Athenian tetradrum on it. In the uh -huh. new tetradrum. This was a, um, a stronghold of the um, Optimatis, mm -hmm. stronghold of Sulla. 
So I think the same people that were making the big lead uh, pieces in Cordoba were probably in Italy making as a um, uh, citarion for some legions which they may have supplied, we don't know who these people were, to civil armies. Oh. And oh, these, pieces, these pieces I counted, I'm still doing the die study, but I think there's something like 200 projected uh, dies for the bronze issue. That's enormous. Yeah, because I remember that exactly the Panther issue, you, you still are doing the I said, I, but that wow. isn't a financing war, that's for Citarium for an army. You see, yes, yes. Wow, okay, thank you. So there is further more to be studied about uh, and to be said about the concerted effort uh, to pay and fund uh, Sula's army. So really, thank you very much. If you, anybody wants... Uh, um, wants this uh, PowerPoint, wants to discuss numbers or the draft uh, of, uh, of this paper that I mean, took me a long time because there is another part that I haven't shown uh, here, please uh, let me know. Okay, and thank you, Clive, for also giving us this extra piece of information. And thank you, everybody, really, for being here. Okay.